repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus. saw me and he bought me with his redeeming love and he loved the air I knew him and all my love is still well and he plunged me to victory beneath the blessing well oh victory in Jesus on some folks this tonight when you get home and get them to come Saturday night and let's try to um, double what we got here amen, amen. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, um, got scheduled after we scheduled our event got scheduled during the week uh, they decided to schedule a ball tournament this weekend and next weekend what is up with that but that's that's what's happened the devil just is you know so we just need to pray and we need to invite folks, and we'll wait and see what God's going to do. And he's got who he wants here tonight. And that's, we'll just go with what we have and, and have a good time in the yes. Lord. And uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's right. Amen. All right. Um, Brother Steve, lead us, would you? All right, you can be seated. Um, I just want to say welcome to the Crusaders. And uh, um, I'm thankful that they're here with us and had some fellowship with them uh, this afternoon and, and got all this equipment set up and, and everything. And, and just thankful that they're here and just be in prayer for things. Amen. They're going to sing some to us and then Brother Dave's going to preach. Amen. We'll have a little love offering here in a little while, but. Let them sing for a little bit first. <laughs> Amen. Well, the Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire because they told the king they were not bound. But they said, listen, then you will know we serve a living God. We're not alone. Well, then I know God can do it too, and there's nothing to it. I know you'll see me through his sweet victory. And then when the storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that he's able, mighty is he. Yeah. Well, they marched around the walls of Jericho. Fall, God showed them so. Just as He's worked by then, He's working now. My God will never change. He has great power. Yeah, and I know my God can do to Him. There's nothing to it. I know He'll see me through a sweet victory. And, and when the storms are raging, He is the rock of ages. Able, mighty is he, and I know my God can do it to him. There's nothing to it. I know he'll see me through a sweet victory. And, and when the storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that he's able, mighty is he. 
It's the 
thankful for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for so many things for what he did for me. Because without him, I can't make it. No way. I've tried it. It don't work. I'm thankful that his mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is so abundant. And even when he takes an old boy just like me from South Arkansas and he says, I'll take care of you if you trust me. And he says, I've got more than you'll ever need if you just trust me. That's my God. That's my Jesus. I pray tonight that you know him and Lord and Savior. And uh, that even when stuff like that happens, that you won't get distracted. <laughs> See, God's going to give us something massive tonight. I believe that with all of my heart. But there's a key behind that. You've got to want to receive it. You've got to come get it. You can walk out of here and not get a thing, but just sore from sitting, amen? <laughs> but if you want to receive something, guess what? He's waiting. You don't even have to wait till the end of the service. It might be while we're singing that you feel led to come and to pray. Please be obedient. Please be obedient to come. Maybe while I'm preaching, you feel led to come and pray. Please, please be obedient to do what God tells you to do. See, revival is not hinged on that bus parked out there. Revival is not hinged on this piano up here or these mics or anything else. Revival is hinged on what you're doing, have done in your heart, and will continue to do in your heart by confession and repentance. That's what revival is based upon. If you're wanting it, and you're desiring it, and you're seeking, and you're praying, and confessing, and repenting, guess what? You'll have revival. You'll have revival. And see, I believe even in this group right here, right here, Sometimes we feel defeated because we did all that we can do and this is what happens. Young man by the name of Evan Roberts in 1902 had prayed for revival for 13 years in his country. God called him to preach. He quit his job in the coal mines, began to preach, and the first message he preached was a little small three-point message. Thirteen people there that night. Thirteen got saved. This is in 1902. There ain't no internet. There ain't no cell phone. There ain't no TV. The only way that they had to know what was going on was folks went around knocking on some doors, began to tell some people, and got under conviction by the Holy Spirit. In six months' time, after that first little revival meeting, 100,000 people had been saved. It's the great revival of Wales. Impacted the country so much, they had to change and retrain the animals in the coal mines because they couldn't understand the men talking because they quit cussing. <laughs> yep. The bars closed down because there was no one going in them. The judge had no, no trial, trials to try because there was no crime. The police department had nothing to do. You say, well, that can't happen today. Oh, well, why can't it? Right now it's going out on the Internet. This is being streamed out on the Internet. There's folks that are watching. 
we're sitting in here, and I know that we got a cell phone and can text and we can call and we can tell people. But you know what the most important thing that will happen is if we get right. If we'll get right with the Lord in this crowd this size, things can happen without a doubt. I believe that, so am I discouraged? No. Would I like to have seen a full house? Amen. Not just to say we had a full house that more could hear about a wonderful Savior named Jesus Christ and his saving power and what he'll do in your life. But I'm thankful that we're here, y'all are here, and the presence of the Lord is here. So if we'll just be obedient and worship the Lord, we're going to have a good time. Who knows? We might not get out before midnight. <laughs> Amen. Well, I want to introduce everybody, and then we'll get back to it. Uh, uh, since we saw a lot of you at Clarendon, uh, God has had something going on for quite a while. And uh, I've known this for over a year. Uh, but as Mary did, she kept all these things in her heart and pondered them about the Lord. That's what I did. I just began to pray. And I knew in God's timing what was going to happen. And, uh, and so uh, Ashley has been a part of the ministry for over three years, sharing her testimony and going. And another thing is I've, I've been praying with her, y'all. I don't understand why she's attracted to this thing over here. But, uh, but I, I'm thankful that God has brought her uh, into the ministry and up onto the platform with her. Now, I want to tell you, getting out of your comfort zone, getting out of your comfort zone, Ashley had never sang. She'd just been around it for three years. And all of a sudden, God, we had to have her. And she, she said, yes, Lord. And she stepped up and it started singing. And I, I want to tell you, I'm so proud of what God is doing in her life. And would you make Miss Ashley Dawson welcome singing tenor with us? And standing next to me, which um, uh, he finally got up the nerve on May the 11th to, uh, at my birthday of all things, to propose to Ashley. And so they are... Uh, they are getting married in December, and so would you make my son, Jonathan Talley, welcome. And back there in the back, still taking care of the sound and the video and doing a good job at that. Uh, bless his heart, he was up till about 2 this morning trying to get this computer system back up and going, and I'm thankful that God has gifted him with that ability because I'm old and I need my sleep. And... Uh, but uh, he does a good job. And would you make Mr. Stephen Hayes welcome back there in the back? And she's out of place. She's supposed to be on the front row, but she's sitting three rows back. She's backslid, Pastor. And so I'm going to pray with her now. And uh, But, no, I'm thankful to my wife to, for what she does in, uh, in the ministry. There's so much that she does. Uh, a lot of you know her, have met her, and know the... We call her our administrator. She hates that name, but somebody has to be gifted with that ability because I'm not, and I'm just a bus driver, amen? And uh, but would you make my wife, Penny Tally, welcome? And the man over here, I have known all of my life. <laughs> and 25 years ago, he started the group, the Crusaders, and... God's just been leading him the direction that he needed to go and singing baritone and playing the piano, my dad, David Talley, make him one. So I'll cherish the
same way. I, I love songs that have a message to them. I love them because they, they speak to your heart. And sometimes even though we're doing all that we know that God's wanting us to do, sometimes there are days that we just we cry before our daddy. We just feel like we're in a valley. But I, I want to assure you he sees our heart and he knows what's going on. Listen to this song as Jonathan sings. I looked apart, but kneel with the rest of the church crowd. I know the routine, I can install the Bible studies in town. Watch Christian TV. I know all the preachers and their cliches. I'm born again without a doubt. I know I'm saved. But sometimes I hurt. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I fall down, stumble over my own disguise. Cause I try to look strong as the whole world looks on. Sometimes I'm all I cry. I try to speak faith, never give that. i 
Come sing for us in a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Um, he stayed with me. He's gonna sing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're gonna eat after the service, so you have to sing for that at least. Amen. Um, I just, uh, I want to say to you folks, thank you for your faithfulness. You guys that are here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to say that from the bottom of my heart. You know, we want to focus in on who's not. I don't want to focus on who's not. I just want to tell you, thank you for being here. We're just going to have a good time. I sat there and he's singing. Sometimes I cry. I think to myself, what am I doing? Why am I complaining? Why am I upset? God gave me some faithful people. And there's some that are faithful that are not here because they have to be in the field and that kind of thing. And there's people that should be here and are not. But I'm so thankful you're here. I really am. I appreciate it. We're going to take an offering. Come on, Brother Ronnie, Brother Kirk, come and help me. You'd really be praying about this offer. God would have you give. Some of you may not give tonight. You may wait and give uh, uh, tomorrow night or Sunday. That's fine. But it's all, all the love offerings going to this group and to their ministry. So really pray about what God would have you give so that God, God's going to meet their needs no matter what. But we won't be a part of it because they're going down the road. They had 37 saved at a prison the other day. 37 saved. Everywhere they go, every time I look at Facebook, Sister Penny's putting on there, we had three saved night, we had five saved night, we had six saved night, we had two saved night. Every single night, just about that they're in a meeting, they have somebody saved. May have somebody saved night, never know. Yeah. Amen. So just uh, be praying about what God will have us do. And uh, Brother Ronnie, lead us.
down the road you don't know which way to go turn to the master he'll be there for you no he's there by your side he's leading you through day and night know that the lord will be there for you Holding you up, and he is right there, right there by your side. Holding you up when you're sitting in the pew, you're feeling the Lord moving on you. Go to the altar, he'll be there for you. of you don't know is Ashley and Jonathan wrote that song right there. He's right there. And uh, that's our next radio single. Our other one has got up to number 76. Woohoo! And uh, I'm thankful for it, but uh, you know, it's all God because that's not what I'm out there doing is pushing radio singles. I'm pushing Jesus Christ and he's in the saving business. That's, that's our heart. And, uh, but it's what is really neat. The night that that song was wrote, the next day was when Jonathan got saved. So you go ahead, son. He used to, Dad would be like, John, share. John, share. No, leave me alone, Dad. You're gone. <laughs> you know, I didn't have nothing to share, though. That's why. Age of nine. Well, I've been doing this all my life, I guess. At the age of nine, I started playing drums for the group. Age of 13, I started singing lead. But at the age of nine, we came back from VBS, and I seen a bunch of my friends walk the aisle, and I wanted to do the same thing they were doing. So I told Dad that, and he, so he led me in this prayer, and I followed him. I didn't follow him. And I thought I did. I went through life. Went to public school to my ninth grade year, and before that, I was... You know, just hanging out with the wrong crowd, you know, but still singing and well, playing drums and singing. And um, after I met Ashley, she had gotten saved. And not that she was a bad person, but there was a change about her. And I realized I never had that change. And, and after I had gotten saved, I realized that the night that she got saved, I couldn't lead her in that prayer because I wasn't saved. And so that kind of hit me hard knowing that someone I care about, I couldn't help them. And so, February the 22nd, we were um, getting ready to do morning Bible study and Ashley was at college. She's about to be on her way home and Satan was just fighting, minding her relationship in the ministry because I was letting Satan fight. And I, 
she got, she got to the house and I said, I'm lost. She said, what do you mean you're lost? I said, I'm going to hell. And after she got saved, I started doubting my salvation. I was like, well, am I saved? Oh, I'm fine. And I would go on. We would do invitations during every service. Dad, we don't miss a time to do an invitation. We're doing every service if we if we get a chance. And we make sure we get a chance. And Dad would be like, there was someone out there that needs to move. There was someone. And I'm like, am I saved? Yeah, I'm fine. And the person that needed to move was me. And I was three foot from him. I was probably the one closest to the altar. And so February the 22nd, I told her I was lost. She said, what do you mean you're lost? I said, I'm going to hell. She said, whoa, 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 hold on. Let me go get mom and dad. So she went and got mom and dad, and they came in the room. Dad said, what's going on? I said, I'm lost. He said, John, I led you in a prayer when you were nine. I said, yeah, dad, you led me. He did it. I said, dad, there's a, and I told dad, I tell people now, I said, there's a difference in thinking you're saved and knowing you're saved. I thought I was saved. And so, Dad said, so you're lost. I said, yes, sir. He said, so you're telling me if you died right now, you were, going, you were going to go to hell. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, what do you want to do about it? I said, well, I want to be saved. He said, well, what are you waiting on? And I said, nothing. So, we have a little funny thing. Me, Ashley, and Stephen all got saved in the same room on different couches. And so, I got saved across... I got saved on the other couch across from her couch. But um, I tell people, you know, I stood in front of thousands and thousands of people knowing I was lost and would say I'm saved. I was kidding myself. I was lying to them. I was lying to myself. I was lying to my family. I was lying to my friends. And I was so worried about what people were going to think if I would step off that stage and say I was lost. And it doesn't matter what they think. It matters what he thinks. And, you know, to know that God didn't give up on me. When other people got tired of the way I acted, the way I, I lived, you know, I tell people I wasn't there when the door was open. I was there when it was closed, waiting on it to get open, you know, because that's what all well, we did was sing. And there's so many people out there now that think that they're saved, that preach, that sing, that do whatever they can in church, and they think that they're saved and they're not. They never had, they, they know it here, but they don't have it here. And so, after I got saved, Dad said, so you're telling me the night that we almost had that head-on collision, if we would have crashed, and you would have died, you would have went to hell. I said, yeah. He said, I, and I thought my whole bus, on, all, our whole house was saved. We called the bus the house, because that, that is home. And he said, there was two people in there that wasn't even saved. And the story about that is we were going to El Dorado and it was about three or four o'clock in the morning and uh, we got on a two lane bridge and the truck got two foot into our lane and there was nowhere to go. And dad said, Lord, you got to do something. And the Lord picked that truck up and moved it because no way he could have done that. The person that was driving could have moved it that quick. And a good friend of ours came to our studio and we put this song down and we asked him could we sing this song he said yeah i would love y'all to it's called he covered it all and to know that god loved us enough that he would do anything that he covered our sins as far as the east is from the west they're from us if you're doubting your salvation tonight doesn't matter what you've done doesn't matter how bad your sin you think it is it doesn't matter God wants you and He loves you. Do not leave here without getting it right. You don't know what could happen when you get in your car or even if you walk out that door. Something could happen. And that, that says eternity is too long to be wrong about your salvation. So I hope you like to see it. Disappointed many and hurt the ones that I love, but 
run in one moment his grace I saw and Jesus he had mercy and he covered it all and from the east to the west my sins are from me oh and he took back in love with Jesus when you left your first love, I don't know what will. Just think back when he saved you. Think back when he reached around and all that filth and that miry clay and that junk in the world and yanked you up and put you on a solid rock and established your goings and put a new song in your heart. Praise unto our God. That's what he does. He just takes ashes and makes it beautiful. He frees us, brother. I mean, he frees us. If you're still bound, you ain't you ain't saved. You ain't saved if you're still bound. You're free if you're saved. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. What a glorious truth. What a wonderful thing God's done for us. What a wonderful thing Jesus has done for us. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You all gonna sing some more? Let me pray. Mm -hmm. Now I know that 
And if he a brand new life and I'm free from all the shackles and chains of my mind and now I am singing a brand Of how Jesus saved me and he covered it all. nothing against me. He had mercy. See, the church today needs to have more mercy. Have mercy. Jesus, he had mercy and he covered it all. Somebody shout this house tonight. For those of you that didn't know it, Brother Ed wrote that song. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, I, I'm thankful for the friendship of Brother Ed. And a lot of you don't know, but we met Brother Ed down at the Claritin Revival. Uh, and we became good friends. And God is just doing some neat stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's just good. It's good, Lord. What you going to say? I don't know, Brother. You have sprung this tonight. You want to do it? I feel it. Man. I can go where you want me to go. <laughs> you get on over him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, amen. You glad to be in church tonight? Yes. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hey. Hey. 
A is an apple. Amen. Who's going through the valley tonight? I'm going through this valley. I'm going through this storm. I'm going with the power of my Lord. No time for stopping anymore. I'm going through this valley. I'm going through this storm. Here's my verse. For too long I have been hindered. For too long my life has been a mess. But Jesus, my Savior, He has been with me. This is he is my joy and happiness. I'm going through this valley. I'm going through this storm. I'm going with the power of my Lord. And no time for stopping anymore. I'm going through this valley. So oh, I know Jesus, He is my portion. He is all I'll ever need. Though the storms of life they may assail me, I know my God would deliver me. Valley. I'm going through this storm. I'm going with the power of my Lord. No time for stopping anymore. I'm going through this valley. I'm going through this storm. One more time. I'm going through this valley. Who's going with me tonight? I'm going through this storm, all the hell you've been through, oh, with the power of my Lord. No time for stopping anymore. I'm going through this valley. I'm going through this storm. I'm going through this valley. I'm going through this storm. Why don't you give the Lord some praise tonight? Amen. So about midnight tonight, that bus over there will be going back and forth and back and forth because we have a good time when we get together and uh, we worship the Lord. And uh, we, uh, Brother Ed was down in our studio recording his CD and um, during the week before Easter. And... Um, he came, and our studio is in our home, and so we have an apartment basically downstairs, and so he became part of the family. And uh, during that week, uh, we walked through the steps of Jesus that whole week while we were in the studio and working, and then at night we would have Bible study and a lot of other things that were going on. And so it was just a great time, and uh, uh, I appreciate you, Brother Ed. I love you, man. And... Uh, I thank you for your walk, and, uh, you know, that's the thing. I want us to do that new song, Is He Real? And and then we've got a word for you tonight, and uh, I, I pray that uh, your hearts have been opened, and, you, uh, you know, I, I was watching as we came up this way, and I was watching as the tractors were plowing the fields, and they were plowing it, and that old plow would dig in and turn up that dirt. And then some of them were coming along sowing seeds behind it. And then some of them were spraying fertilize. And as you pass by that green corn that's out there, I mean, it's just gorgeous. But I want to ask you a question tonight. Is he real in your life? Is he real? Listen to the message of the song. He 
there once on the water trusting in the Lord Jonah went to Nineveh preaching now God's word the angel shut the lion's mouth saving Daniel's life those of us won't spread the word about how Jesus lives in our life is he real can you see him in your life is he One who gave the blind their sight He died upon the cross So we can live eternally Save me from a fiery hell And he set my soul free Every day we go through Singing praises to the King We go to Sunday school But do we learn the things? It's time to spread the word of Christ and stand for what we believe is God real in your life or is he just a dream is he real can you see him in your life is he One who gave the blind their sight Is see real Is see real Is see real Is see real In your life He's going to preach, but I want to, I just want to say something real quick. I, uh, when I met this family, the thing that really touched me about them is that they live what they, what they preach. And having Bible study they do that. I mean, they, um, every night, you know, even though they had church, they'd go back to the bus and have Bible study. Yeah. It means something when people do that. They're genuine. They're not in it to be big time and be have their name in lights. They're doing it to serve the Lord and to get folks saved and bring revival and do what they can for the cause of Christ. I appreciate that. And uh, that's why I had to have them come. I just had to. And uh, we'll just see what God does. So, brother, come preach to us whatever God's laid on your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Scott. It's an honor to stand and to, to present the gospel. 
that song that we just sang, Ashley wrote that song. It's in Is He Real? And tonight, uh, I've got a, a real question for you. And uh, is God your God or somebody else's? You know, a lot of times we've got, growing up, we'd have friends in school and a lot of you that may still be in school or in college. And and you would say, is that person over there? No, that's so-and-so's friend over there. Or you would say, are they married? Uh, No, no, they're, they're not married. They're just friends. You know, you can know somebody but not know them. You know, Facebook is proof of that. You can go on Facebook and you can find out anything you want to know about anybody, anywhere. And if you don't like what they say, you can make up something and tag it in there, you know. (laughs) You can change identity, amen. But my question to you tonight is, is God your God or somebody else's? And so, as we begin to think about this tonight, and and we're thinking about revival, and we're praying about revival, and we want to see a great revival. So many times everybody says, well, I remember so-and-so when we had that great revival. You know why we don't have great revivals today? Because people don't know God. They don't know him. They, They know his name, and they know some of his attributes, and they know what somebody else has got but they don't have it we find that uh, if you have your bibles go ahead and turn to the book of daniel uh, chapter three and we're going to look at a couple of verses to start with and we're probably going to work all the way through chapter three if time permits but we're going to look at verses 28 and 29 and and so we the thing that I, that I want you to understand is when somebody looks at you or somebody is carrying on a conversation or, and says, Brother Scott knows Jesus. He knows who Jesus is. You see it in his walk. You see it in what he does. Can they say that about you and about me? Or do they say... Uh, David knows Brother Scott's God. You catch it? David knows Brother Scott's God. He saw what Brother Scott's God did. And so we find out here what's going on is with Nebuchadnezzar. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Is God your God or somebody else's? If you have your Bibles, would you stand in honor of the reading of God's word? Daniel chapter 3, verses 28 and 29. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent an angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no sort, no other God that can deliver after this sort. Let's pray. Father, right now we love you and we adore you, and we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for its truth. We thank you for how you speak to us through it. We thank you for the time of worship. God, I thank you for your presence, your sweet Holy Spirit. And God, I ask you right now that you would move about and you would draw and you would convict. And Lord, I ask you right now that we, when we depart this place, that we would know you personally, Lord. Lord, that's our heart's desire. Now speak to us. Have your way in this service. Father, I pray you'd use me in any way you see fit. Lord, I want to lift you up and raise you high that you're so worthy of. Use me, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we find here the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, I I want you to understand 
this is truth. This is not some fictional story right here. A lot of people say, oh, well, that's just a story that happened back so many years ago. Well, I want you to understand that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three young men that associated themselves with Daniel. And they purposed in their heart, they purposed in their heart that they were going to serve the Lord. And as by doing that, the Lord showed favor upon them. And Daniel, he, he became over uh, a lot of the wise men. He was over all of them in the, in, in the Babylon area and so many other things. And so he asked that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego also. And so they were put up. Now, here's old Nebuchadnezzar. Now, you got to stop and think. Daniel has done came and interpreted to him a vision, a dream. He already knows that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego serve the Lord. And he's done talked about it even beforehand. Isn't that just like today? Isn't that just like today? You come to church and people, they, they say, oh, we had a great time in church today. The Lord really showed up. And then they walk out the door and they slap in that old cussing CD, a bar drinking, stinking, and going on and everything else. And they say, I ain't even got out of the parking lot. Oh, but we had a great time at church. Nebuchadnezzar, he knows. He's done heard of the Lord. And so we find that Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 3 has decided to uh, make a, a God for himself. And he puts out a decree and as the music plays and that everybody's supposed to bow down and worship. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had other plans. I think we need some folks with some other plans today. We need some folks that's got some backbone, as my friend Brother Jack says, like a saw log that'll stand firm, that ain't scared. They ain't scared of what somebody's going to think. They ain't scared about getting on somebody's toes. My friend, if it's in the Word of God, I want it on my toes and all over me. I want it. Because then when it gets on me, then God has convicted me of some areas that's in my life, and I better open up and repent and confess and get right. Nebuchadnezzar, so he's done made this God, and he's got this decree out, and the music begins to play and everybody else is bowing down and worshiping this idol God. And then here comes some of these other folks and said, well, you've got these three over here. They didn't bow down. Oh, really? And so he sends for them. And I, and I love what he says in verse 14. And uh, he done sent for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now you got to understand the king's done gotten mad. Because the decree was out there that if nobody bowed down, they were cranking up the barbecue pit, folks. They were fixing to have a, a, a smoking time, if you will. And so they, they had everything going. And Nebuchadnezzar, these, this was part of his staff, you understand. These were people that was in authority. And they weren't bowing down. What is up with that? And so we find that... In verse 13, let's start right there. And then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded uh, to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do ye serve my God nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready that what time you hear the sounds of the cornet, the flute, the harp, Sabbath, the palsy, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the, the image which I have made. Well, I wonder why I put well there. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And... I like this part. He's, he's questioning right here. He said, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? I want you to understand that God is Jehovah, Amen. King of kings. There is no other. And I don't understand why people have to be told over and over and over 
who God is. I can remember my daddy telling me, son, why do I have to tell you over and over? And about the second time, that little belt comes zipping out of some pants, and he says, you're going to understand now. <laughs> and don't you understand that if you're a child of the king, you're going to get that same kind of whipping from the Lord? Don't you know who he is? Well, we find in verse 16 that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. 17 says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. I like that part. We got some folks today that don't get that part where it says, and he will deliver us out of there. They take the portion and they get to that and they're going through a valley and they say, oh Lord, that little picture says, it's me again. Would you deliver me if you could? Oh no, no. When the, the man with the leprosy went before Jesus, he said, he said, Lord, would you? He said, if you will, or if you could, and you can, you will heal me. He said, he didn't, he didn't put a question mark there because the man with leprosy knew. And Jesus said, yes, I'm willing. My friend, I want to tell you, God can and will deliver us. But we need some folks that will stand up and believe that today because we got a lot of them that just, well, that's just, that's old timey stuff. That don't happen no more. Well, I want to tell you different. I can tell you about some things that's happened in my life. We've seen it firsthand. I'm telling you, God is still in the delivering business. He's still in the blessing business. And guess what? He's in the saving business. We find that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had no doubt whatsoever that God was going to deliver them because of the fact that when, when he says, and... He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But I like verse 18, folks. We need some verse 18 people today. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I want to tell you today, there's, we, we need some folks that ain't scared to proclaim that verse. Lord, if it's not your will, I'm still going to stand for you. I'm still going to stand strong. I'm not backing down. I believe your word and what your word says, and I believe that you're true. Today, we go everywhere. We in a lot of churches. We had a lot of meetings. And I'm finding every day that there's more and more of our churches today that are bowing to golden images they're bowing down because they don't want to offend nobody. They don't want to call sin, sin. They don't want to preach the old way, if you will, because folks just don't want to hear it. I want to tell you, the gospel's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It don't change. It hadn't changed. It's going to always be. And so I'm telling you tonight, I'm not discouraged because there, there's a select number of people here. Amen? Because you chose to be obedient to what God wanted you to do. As we prayed at about 640 tonight, there was folks in our hearts that we knew that were making decisions. They were wrestling. I'm too tired. I don't feel like coming today. I've had a hard day at work today. The kids are too rowdy. We hadn't had supper. And you know they got that catfish plate going on over there tonight. And I really don't want to miss my Friday night meal. But I, I'm looking for some folks that get serious. That'll say, let it be known that we're not going to bow down. We're not going to give in to what's these golden images that you've got worshiping. Well, we find that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the king has done, got fired up. And so he calls some of the men to stoke the fire seven times hotter. They begin to start chunking the wood to it. My friend, they got it so hot so hot that the Bible says the men that threw them in there were burned up also. Let me stop right there and help you on something. You think a lot of times that you can get 
well, if I don't really get into sin, I'm not really doing it. My friend, but if you get up too close to the fire, you're going to get burned. It may pull you right on in there with it, and you ain't even done nothing. Get away from sin. The Bible says to flee from the appearance of all evil. It doesn't say to try it to see if it fits. It says to flee, to get away, run, flee. If somebody is chasing you with a gun, what are you going to do? You're going to flee. My friend, sin will kill you. It will destroy you. Well, no, brother, I'm saved, and so I can go do what I want to do, and, 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 I, and it'll be all right. You don't have to worry about me. The, God's a forgiving God. Yeah, but he's a just God. He'll get tired of you. Yeah, you, you may be saved, as the Bible says, as though by fire. But my friend, if you are born again, sold out to Jesus Christ, you ain't going to want to sin. See, that's the difference. Well, we find here that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were quote unquote sold out. I went on the, the Google. Everybody, thank you, Lord, for Google. And I, and I Googled, what is the age of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown into the fire? Anybody got a clue on that one? I, it said 16 to 18. How about some men today, 16 to 18, that'll stand up and won't bow down? How about some 20 to 30s? How about some 30 to 40s? How about some 40 to 50s? 60s to 70s, 70s to 80. Monday morning, we were in uh, Benton, Louisiana, uh, doing a senior adult vacation Bible school. Never had heard of that. And then the guy called me and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> They've done it for 10 years. Well, and this, this is a, a big facility, a big church. Uh, they're, they're senior adults. They had 150 senior adults there. And they had it in their life center. And it, it was a neat deal. And they've been doing it for 10 years. It's a Monday through Friday. They start at 10 o'clock. And, you know, it's an hour program. And then they, they eat. And, you know, it's a neat deal. You know what they call it? Revival. That's the closest thing they get to revival. That ain't the way I want to have revival, folks. But needless to say, we had revival there that day. Uh, and, and so after the service, uh, we had the opportunity to sing, and then, uh, and then they messed up and asked me to preach. And, uh, and so uh, we had a good time. And after the service was over with, wonderful folks there, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, and there was a lady that, when she came in, she caught Penny and I's attention. Because she, she looked just like a friend of ours from Magnolia. And, and so after the service was over with, she come by me and she said, uh, well, you taught me something today. And I, we were sitting there eating and, uh, and I said, well, wonderful. And so she was, uh, I preached on Dan Daniel in the lion's den. And, and so we, we talked about that and uh, Penny had talked to her about a, a piece of jewelry that she had on and she was wanting me to figure out how to make it so I could make some like in my spare time driving. And uh, so, you know, that's right. Yeah. Uh, silver soldering too, you know. And so we began to talk a little bit and uh, we began to share about some things. And, and she said, you know, she said, I'm just 78 years old and, and I wished I could learn more about the scriptures and everything. And all of a sudden the door opened up. And she began to pour out her heart. And she began to share with us that she walked the aisle at the age of 10 with a friend to get baptized. And we began to talk. And she said, I pray every day and ask the Lord to save me. My friend, I want to tell you, once is enough when you get saved. He died once on a cross. And if you get born again and sold out to him, I want you to understand, you're blood-bought. And so we talked a little bit for probably 15 or 20 minutes, and I, I called Ashley. She was up there helping get the stuff tore down. I said, come over here and share your testimony with this lady. She began to share her testimony, and after going through it, the lady was weeping. I mean, she was weeping. 
had the Roman roads. Uh, and by the way, you ought to keep a copy of that with you all the time. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. And I sat down and I, and I looked at her. And she said, I think I'm going to go ask my pastor. I think it'll fix it if I get rebaptized." And so I told her, I said, started down through it. Beginning of the Roman roads. Started going through it line by line. And she would share a little bit and then it was really, really getting a hold of her. And I asked her, Penny came over there and she began to share some thoughts with her. And I said, what's stopping you from praying and asking the Lord to save you today? I, and, I, and I did just what I asked Jonathan. I said, I looked at her and I said, if you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? And she said, in hell. It wasn't no I think. It's in hell. And so I said, what's stopping you right now? And she said, nothing. 78 years old. She slid her chair back and got down on her knees on the gym floor. We gathered around her and began to pray. And if, hey, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Satan sent this person in the door. Wasn't nobody in there but just a couple of work workers and us. And we're praying around this woman. And this woman comes that had been there, comes through the door. Evidently, she wasn't look, looking for us. She didn't have on her spiritual eyes. I can stop and hang out there a while, but I'm going to move on. But we need to keep our spiritual eyes on constantly, Christians, because God's got opportunities for us. And this woman, she comes barely in. Anybody seen my coffee cup? We're praying with this woman. She's asking the Lord to come in and to save her and to forgive her of her sin. And she doesn't get the cup, and she sees us. And it's just a hush that comes over. But that dear lady, she prayed and she received Christ and she got up off of that floor. I'm going to tell you at 78 years old, she had a change in her complexion. Her physical appearance was the same, but her demeanor was different. That's what my God can do. That's what my God can do. Give me a few folks that ain't afraid of, of old Satan. I'm telling you. He'll rob you. He'll steal you. Oh, he makes things look good. But I want to tell you, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood firm, folks. They didn't back down. Even when they opened that door and chunked them in the fiery furnace. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Sometimes you feel like you're being chunked in the fiery furnace. And you feel like there's no escape. But what did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say? He will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. So I'm telling you, I, I, I want you to understand, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're sold out to him, he will deliver you. And if you're here and you've never been saved and you're lost and undone and you realized it, he will save you. So we find that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're done got thrown into the fire and they're walking around and guess what? The old king is drawn to his feet. The old king begins to come up because he said, uh, uh, didn't we cast three men into there? Because you know, he's got he's to have an old deep voice. You know, he's, he's somebody. He's somebody. He got the robe and he's got everything else. But I want to tell you, when Jesus steps on to the scene, it brings people to their feet. Most of the time, it'll bring them to their knees. The king he begins to ask his counselors. He's going to have a little committee meeting. And, and they're going to confer. My friend, when Jesus is on the scene, the evidence is clear. In your life, when Jesus is in your heart, I want to tell you there's evidence that is clear that you serve a risen Savior. There won't be no hiding it under a bushel basket. Because you ain't going to want to. As Jonathan shared with you a while ago, his testimony, as he began to share that with you, I, I, I want to assure you, if you ain't got anything to talk about, you ain't got anything. Don't tell me that you're too shy to talk about the Lord. It don't work that way. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, O king, he will deliver us. And as the king stands up, he was astonished, the Bible says, and, 
and rose in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, true, O king. And he answered and he said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and listen to me. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. See, when Jesus comes on the scene, you're going to recognize him. See, the king didn't have no problem. He didn't even know God and all of a sudden he sees the son of God. My friend, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Give us some folks that's not as scared. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 16 to 18 year old young men. That said. But let it be known, O king. That we ain't bowing to your gods. So as we looked at the verses that we started with. King has done. Realized something. He's done seen Jesus. But my friend, he still didn't get it. Oh, he got a, he got a little taste of it, but he didn't get it. Because you see in 28, he says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My friend, he just said he saw the Son of God, but he didn't get it in his heart. He didn't get it in his heart. Tonight, I, I, I want you to understand, you can come to every church meeting, you can come to every Sunday school, you can study, and if you don't get him here, you know how much difference, uh, do you know how, what the distance between heaven and hell is? It's about a foot, right here to here. If you got him up here and not here, you're going to bust hell wide open. But if you got him here, that's where it counts. A heart knowledge. A heart knowledge of knowing. I encourage you to read chapter 4 because you'll find out as it goes on down that Nebuchadnezzar, after he made a decree and went through all of this, he had a decree out there that if anybody talked bad about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, that they were going to be cut into pieces and they were going to just do away with their home and everything else. But he didn't get it. He didn't get it right there. My friend, he lost his kingdom. God told him, he said, this day you're going to go crazy. Sent him running into the field like a wild man. My friend, God will bring you to your knees one way or the other. And then as Nebuchadnezzar, he looks up and recognized. He ain't nothing but God's everything. I want to tell you, our, my God will deliver. See, Moses knew him. Noah knew him. Jonah knew him. Daniel knew him. Paul met him on the Damascus Road. Peter met him on his knees in a boat. Where'd you meet him at? Do you know him? Do you know him like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Or do you just have him up here? Well, Brother David, I've been a member of this church for the next the last 45 years, and I've been on every committee, and I've served here, and I've served there. Guess what? All that will burn up with you on the way to hell if you don't know Jesus personally in your life. Do you know him? Are you willing to forsake it all and follow him? Peter did. Peter had a fishing business. He's a professional fisherman. And he said he forsook it all. Walked away from it. Are you willing? I'm looking for a few good folks. That's an army slogan. Hey, there's going to be battles. There's going to be some war. But guess what? The rewards are out of this world. What about it tonight? Are you willing to go out of here tonight and go home and get on your phone and call somebody and say, hey, I'd love for you to come tomorrow night. I'd love for you to come and 
Go with us back to the revival tomorrow night. Hey, don't invite them because we're here. Invite them because they, want, they need to hear about Jesus. The Bible says to go out and compel them. If you compel somebody, you go out and say, hey, man, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll come get you. Man, I'll come get you. I'll carry you back home. You never know what impact that's going to have on somebody. I pray that tonight that you'll, you'll think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before you go to bed. Think about the faith that they had in the Lord. and They were sold out. Sold out. Would you sell out tonight? Remember at the beginning of the service, I told you about Evan Roberts, 13 people. Six months later, 100,000 people saved. So I'm going to ask you a question. Is God your God or somebody else's? If he's your God, then you can say truthfully that God is still God and he can still do that today. But there's a key behind that. It's up to me and you. For me and you to pray and confess and get right, and say, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. Do you know him? See, that's, that's probably the most important question tonight. Is do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Or have you just read about him? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. And Brother Scott's going to be here in the altar. Maybe you'd like to come and just begin to pray. Maybe God has put a place, somebody upon your heart. Maybe there's a, a friend, a family member, a lost person that you know that you wished were here tonight. Why don't you come and pray for him? Why don't you say, Lord... I do whatever it takes. Just be obedient. That's the main thing. Whatever the Lord is dealing with you about. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were sold out. Will you sell out? 100%. Tonight, maybe you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you realize tonight that you had a head knowledge and not a heart knowledge. The Bible talks about a prayer of faith. Recognizing who Jesus is, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that he died on a cross. And on the third day, he arose again that he's in heaven and that he is the only one that can save you and forgive you of your sins maybe you've realized that tonight and you'd like to invite him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior now me standing up here praying a prayer ain't gonna save you it's a personal relationship it's where you have to ask him to come into your heart and to save you it's personal. You have to ask him to forgive you of your sins and save you. The Bible says that whosoever will may come. What about it? Is that you tonight? And you've realized that? Maybe you're like Jonathan. Well, what will everybody think? Hey, I can tell you what they'll think in heaven if you get saved. There'll be a rejoicing going on. I can tell you what's going to happen right here in this platform we're going to be rejoicing if that's you I'd be honored to lead you in a prayer but it's still up to you it's still up to you you're the one that's got to pray in faith believing and asking the Lord to save you but if that's you why don't you pray with me why don't you pray in faith believing saying dear Lord Jesus I know that I am a sinner and Lord Jesus, I believe that you died 
and he rose again on the third day. Lord Jesus, I need you to come into my life and to forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, save me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Now if you prayed that prayer in faith and you asked the Lord to save you, folks are still praying. You meant business with the Lord. Is there anyone here that say, I prayed that prayer and asked the Lord to save me tonight? Anyone here? Anyone? Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for your word and how true it is. Lord, I ask you that you continue to be with us. Lord, I pray if there's Christians here that are hurting. Lord, and they just need something from you tonight. Lord, I pray that they call upon you. Confess what it is. Get it right. Lord, that you'd bless them. And Lord, I pray you'd have your way in the rest of this invitation time. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand? Maybe tonight there's something that you're dealing with and God has revealed. I know a lot of folks have been in the altar already. But if there's something else that you need somebody to pray with you about, why not get somebody by the hand? I know that Brother Scott would be glad to pray with you. There are others that would be. We're going to sing through one verse. Be obedient. Be obedient to what the Lord is telling you to do. Peter walks on the water Trusting in the Lord Jonah went to Nineveh Preaching out God's word The angels shut the lion's mouth Saving Daniel's life Most of us won't spread the word about how Jesus lives in our life as He will. Can you see Him in your life? Is He real? The one who gave the blind their sight. Is He Is he real? Is he real? Is he real in your life? Well, amen. It's been good. I hate to shut it down. It was really good tonight. Appreciate everybody that's here. Amen. Get on the phone tonight and tomorrow morning. And you young people, bring somebody with you tomorrow, all right? Yeah. Try to get some young people to come. We've got uh, some young preachers. Yeah, well, the young people, I'm trying to get them to bring somebody tomorrow morning and hear these young preacher boys. Y'all can bring somebody, too, but I want to get, get them to bring some of them teenagers and get them here for the, uh, for the morning. And what, what, did I, what did I say wrong? Did I say something? Just messing with me? What's that? Oh, okay, young man. That's right. Well, you know. But uh, tomorrow, let's really work on getting people here tomorrow night and uh, see what God's going to do. Amen. Thanks for coming. Brother Ed, close us in prayer, would you, brother? I hope you enjoyed that service. And if God spoke to you during that service and you've realized that you need a Savior and that you're lost and undone, and why don't you call out to the Lord? 
He's just waiting to hear from you. He already knows, and you know as well as anybody, if the Holy Spirit is drawing you. And right where you're at, you can call upon him. See, God can hear a whisper all the way to heaven from right where you're at because he sees your heart. Why don't you ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior, to forgive you of your sins? He's waiting on you, but it's something that you have to do. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, then you don't have a personal relationship. But that's what it takes. That's what it takes to know Jesus Christ is a personal relationship. So if that's you and you, you would like to receive Jesus into your heart and start this relationship, I'd ask you to pray with me. But pray in faith, believing that he'll save you. And he says he'll do just that. So why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you died for me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, I'm lost. And I need you to save me. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in faith and asked the Lord to save you, I want to be the first to tell you that you're saved. And that you're on your way to heaven if you prayed that prayer in faith and believed and asked God. We'd like to hear from you. You can contact us at thecrusaders-ministries.com. You can find us on Facebook. Send us a message. Or give me a call, 870-904-3118. We'd like to find out where you're at and get you involved in a local church, try to help you start your walk with Jesus Christ in a positive way. But we're excited what God has done and we look forward to hearing from you. And if you'd like to partner with the Crusaders, you can become uh, a seed partner by sowing a seed and meeting a need. We're a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization. You can go to our website, thecrusaders-ministries.com and you can Give safe and secure there. You can give a one-time tax deductible donation or you can set it up to do monthly and it can just come straight out of your account. Whatever it is that God has placed upon your heart, I pray you'd be faithful to do that. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me, David, at 870-904-3118. Thank you again for watching this service and I pray it was a blessing to you. And God bless you.